Thank you. I appreciate all of you being here. Um, no, it is uh, very difficult, especially for those of you that have lost loved ones. Um, our, you have our deepest sympathy, uh, as do all of those families that have lost uh, loved ones in the aftermath. Uh, this is a serious issue, and Mr. Floyd, it, it is. Um, it, it's a comfort to a lot of us, especially those of us who are. Christians to see the way in which you've carried yourself. You've asked for people to refrain from violence. We don't need it to lead to worse violence. But uh, that that was atrocious. It's just hard to watch the video and not feel great sympathy for your brother and great sympathy f for you and your family. Uh, so it's nice when we get together and talk about potential solutions. Um, hopefully the uh, majority will allow more input uh, than the zero input we've had on the bill so far. Uh, but it also is important to look at, at different proposals. We've heard some say, you know, on television, let's get rid of uh, uh, or defund the police, get rid of them. Uh, some are saying, let's get rid of the qualified immunity that police have so they don't get sued by every single person uh, they come in contact with. Um, as a judge, I had judicial immunity. Uh, and the thing is, it's a qualified immunity. And it's not there if you're violating the law. And that's as it should be. But um, as we look at solutions, and, and it's been brought up by, uh, by others, but the, the police unions have defended bad apples. And if you talk to police, if you know police, or Dan Boncino talk about it, they know who the bad apples are. And most of them don't want to have anything to do with them. They don't want to be on patrol with them. They don't want to work with them. So how do we get rid of them? I personally have seen where um, you have a bad apple at the top. And some righteous whistleblower has retaliation against them, and the unions have come in and appropriately defended them. But uh, when it comes to eliminating qualified immunity, I've seen what uh, <laughs> happened with teachers. I, I had a bill to eliminate or to create qualified immunity for teachers, educational immunity. And the, the um, teachers group, never had got on board, I was told it was because they make so much money selling liability insurance to their um, members. And I'm afraid it might be a cash cow for the unions, but that's not what this needs to be about. Um, let me just ask you, Mr. Floyd, if somebody conspires to lynch somebody else, do you think a 10-year maximum sentence would be appropriate? No. No. Oh, you, you're shaking your head. Thank you. No. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, I agree with you. Bobby Rush, he's a, he's a fine man, a just wonderful heart, good-hearted man. He had a bill that would make a life sentence if you conspired to participate. And he was, I said, Bobby, it should be a life sentence. Why is it now 10 year max? And he said, well, you know, I had it at, at life maximum sentence, but I was told if it was going to pass the house, it had to be brought down to 10 years. Well, I think that's an insult. And I know the Emmett Till bill is part of this overall bill, but I would hope we would come together and say, 10 years for conspiring to lynch is not an adequate maximum punishment. Maybe it needs to be lower in a given case, but let's have life in there as a penalty, and I would hope to see that. Um, I know Chuck Colson once said, our hope in America will not arrive on Air Force One. And Pastor Scott, you know, have eminent respect for you. Where is your hope for America? My hope for America is 
the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that our country was founded on Christian principles, that we've invoked the name of God and the presence of God, and I believe the hand of God was upon this nation in its founding. Let me say this. When I, when I saw the video, George Floyd... Remember, I'll, the uh, time in the member has expired. Uh, Mr. And he finishes Cohen. answer. Cohen. I guess we'll have to have you do it by video, and then you can just keep going. 